Good morning, folks. Welcome back to another video. Today is gonna be a fun one. We are out here on a beautiful Southwest Idaho Lake trolling for some big trout. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of photos lately of some big fish being pulled out of here, and it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Today may end up being a pretty interesting day because uh, my fish finder is not turning on. I'm assuming the battery's not dead because this thing's lasted three days without a charge. Um, but yeah, so far we are gonna be fishing blind today, which is something I haven't done very much on the pond prowler. So we're starting the day off for me at least with a Rapala on one rod, and then this one I'm actually going with a Kokobo Dodger with a uh, like a little wedding ring spinner on the back, and then I've just tipped the spinner with a piece of worm. Usually with kokanee, I pretty much just have my little kokanee box, but when you're going for trout, there's so many more things that trout will eagerly hit. So it's really nice to have a, a varied amount of stuff. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, from, oh, oh, oh. I'm on. Yeah. <laughs> About time. That's a good fish, folks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Come here. Yes. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Good trout! Good work. Thank you! For the lake that I'm at, it's not a giant, but it's still a good fish. Don't get me wrong. Whew. Alrighty, folks. There he is right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow. He still is a stocked fish, but the cool thing about what this lake does is they dump them when the fish are really, really small so that they actually grow into the lake, which is cool. All right, buddy. Woo! There he goes. I'll show you guys what I caught him on here real quick. I basically run, it's a really simple setup on this one. All this is is just that uh, that swinging, like uh, 3 8 ounce weight connected here. I have it to a bead chain swivel, 10 pound test, and I've been switching back and forth from a lot of different stuff today, but I finally am getting bites on this guy right here. It's a Kokobo all silver dodger. And then on the back, I actually tied my own little wedding ring spinner. And the key here, you guys know I love these hooks. This right here is called a slow death hook. And so the cool part about this hook, as you see, is it's actually turned there. So what's nice is you actually thread the worm up on to the hook and that worm twirls in the water and man oh man they love it when that little thing is twirling from the combined action of the twirl in the worm the blade the spinner blade moving and the dodger moving the whole bait that's a ton of movement and i think that really fires them up on some days yeah cool that fish is probably around 16 17 inch so my goal today is we could could get a nice 20 inch rainbow in the in the net that'd be pretty cool Oh my gosh. I just lost one. Oh yeah, yep, 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 we're on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that was on the drop. I didn't even have it out yet. Oh my. Folks, we figured something out. Feels smaller, whatever it is. Could be crappie. There's a lot of crappie in here too. Some more weight on them. No way. No way! Oh, no way! No way! It is a freaking crappie! Let's go! I was I was gonna say that thing was not fighting very hard. <laughs> yeah, look at that folks! I, I knew that was a chance of it today, but I'm going for trout. This is a complete bycatch. Oh my gosh, how cool! Look at that! Beautiful! beautiful crappie man this is gonna really hurt some of you guys but watch this i just released him folks i did not bring my cooler today because i wasn't going for crappie and i wasn't going to keep the trout so even if i were to keep him he's just going to be sitting on the boat all dry and he's probably just going to go bad and there's no point wasting a fish so he's back down there for one of you guys to catch 
folks, we're doing something now. We're on them. We're, we're figuring something out here. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. We're up, we're up. Right after changing that. Wow. Right after we changed that, that Rapala. <gasps> no, no, are you kidding me? No! Oh my gosh, I knew exactly what I freaking did wrong, too. Do you guys see when he popped off? It was a crappie, I could feel it. Right as I moved my hand to even the boat out, that's when he popped. Folks, I absolutely hate how much tailspin this boat has. In my next video, hopefully I will be solving that. I have a big, big modification that I'm working on. Oh my gosh, if I didn't, if that, if my boat wasn't tailing and I just focused on the fish instead of spinning out of control, I would have landed him. That sucks. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Ain't coming off this time, pal. That's how you know it's a crappie, is you're just burning them in on the top. <laughs> oh, whoa. Look at that, folks. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Crappie, let's go. <laughs> I honestly had no idea I was going to be having so much fun with crappie today. Folks, it's another beautiful, beautiful little crappie right there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but these are black crappie. Um, from what I've heard in this lake, the white crappie are much bigger than the black crappie. It looks like a black crappie. It looks like what I've caught in the past, but if it is a white crappie, please correct me uh, down below. But either way, beautiful fish. All right, homie. There he goes. Woo! Man, that would be an awesome way to end the day right now with just like one big old trout, like 20 inch plus rainbow, just smacking either rod. That'd be, that'd be cool. Oh, yep. 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 Oh my. I was setting up my other, my other downrigger and this thing crushed it. I don't know what this is though. This could be a trout. This could be, this could be anything. Those are trout shakes. Come on, please be a trout, please. Oh yeah. Oh no, it's not. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. So now I know the difference between the black and the white crappie because that is a white crappie right there. And that is a big old crappie. Look at that thing. I thought I wasn't gonna have a video today and we're just killing them now. Oh my gosh. Alrighty folks, look at that. Beautiful white crappie. Man, he is so much different than the black crappie. I was wondering at first, I was like, is that other one a white crappie? I'm not sure. Then I caught a white crappie and I knew exactly what they look like. Cool, that's a, that's a PB for me. That is a personal best white crappie. I've only caught really, really little ones in the past. But, oh man, beautiful fish. Ah, look at that fish, folks. Beautiful, beautiful white crappie. Oh, geez. Of course you got the camera all wet. All right, little man, thank you. Back down to the depths he goes. Whew, well, that was a fun little morning, folks. We got it done, we got some fish. And I will definitely be coming out here and doing more trips, because man, that was fun. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown of my trolling setup here. Obviously, everything on this gets taken on and off in between each fishing trip. Now, depending on what fish species I'm targeting is how this boat is gonna be set up differently. For instance, if I'm bass fishing, the rod holders aren't gonna be there, downrigger's not gonna be there, uh, you know, some of the stuff like that, the boat camera setup isn't gonna be there. 
a lot of that's going to be gone. However, I'm going to have like an anchor in the back. I'm going to have different things. So this is how I set it up for trolling specifically. So let's go over a couple of the key, key pieces here. First key piece for me is the downrigger. Now this downrigger is a Canon mini troll. It's about a hundred bucks. So it's not, not too bad. I have a little piece of wood holding it so that it's not bending into the plastic. On the end here, I have a four pound ball, which now has some marks because I accidentally dragged it today. And the clip here, you can actually buy these. These are custom from Kokanee Tackle. My man Chris over there, he makes all his own stuff. This is a key piece of trolling right here is this little clip. So, you know, don't skimp on it. They're like 12 bucks. Just do it. So that's the downrigger. I actually have another downrigger for the other side, but I knew that I wanted to fish one rod without a downrigger today, especially because you guys... I know you guys like to see the rod actually swing down versus on this, the rod just kind of bends a little bit. So I also do that when I'm filming because it's a little bit more of a dramatic hit and you know, gets more views. Here we have the rod holders. Uh, this is some Amazon brand. The reason why I got it is because these actually connect to the railing. That way I don't have to do any more drilling into the side of the boat. So these just go right here. I can actually unscrew the bottom and then I can move this up and down. So the nice thing is the same thing on the other side. And whenever I don't want them in, I'll take the rod out here real quick. You just clip this on the side, boom, and it comes out. So when I'm bass fishing, I just leave that here and now the top of the boat is completely flush. And so whenever I want it back in, just go right back here, lock it in on the side and boom. So I have that on both sides as well. These are awesome, super, super key piece if you wanna troll. Now switching over from like the most useful piece of equipment today, we're gonna to go to the most useless piece of equipment today and that was my fish finder. So here I just have a mount here on the boat this little guy right here actually just pops out, but this is the transducer clipped here. That wire goes, I cut a hole in an ammo box and the battery is in here. So everything charges and that way I'm not pulling battery from my main battery here because that trolling motor needs all the power it can get. So this just charges the fish finder. Everything plugs in back here into the back. And then this guy or this little mount here holds it and I can completely adjust this everywhere, you know, any view I want, which is really nice. So that's the whole fish finder setup here. The fish finder is a Garmin Striker 5. This is the same one I use while I'm ice fishing. Just when it's not ice season, I move it over to the boat. The two biggest questions that I get probably about this boat are what battery do you use and what trolling motor do you use? So this guy right here is the Minn Kota Endura C2. This is a 36 pound thrust. I love this thing. It's worked great for me. The only thing that I would change is I'd probably get a bigger battery next time. Just because after a full day of trolling, I end up running out. And when I first got this boat, I just planned on going to ponds and goofing around with it. I had no idea that like within the first month of buying it, I would be trolling for kokanee, rainbows. This year I'm going for lake trout. I'm catching salmon. Like it's pretty crazy the fish species that I've caught on this thing. So looking back, I probably would have upgraded both and gotten a more powerful rig. I can get up to about three miles per hour max if I have not a lot of stuff on the boat and it's like just me and I'm just cruising out to, to get to a spot. I can go about three miles per hour with this guy. On the side here, what you guys don't see is I have a paddle just clipped onto the side of the boat. I have, I cover a lot of this stuff in a other video too. So if you guys want to just see that, but uh, I love this one right here. I like the one that has the end like this, because when I'm launching for the day, I need something to push off of the bank before I put my trolling motor down and get going. So that thing's awesome. Oh, what's going on guys? Hold up. I got food. I have food. What's going on guys? Come on. How close will you get? If I really wanted to, I could throw out a piece of food to distract them and then come in with my net and just dive on the top of them and I'd probably catch them. But I'm not gonna do that because that's mean. So this is the back of the boat. This is kind of just my storage and random crap spot. If you guys notice, when I move the chair out of the way here, this is what I'm typically doing. So the back there, I have my battery. It's an EverStart 24 group. Uh, I forget what the voltage is, but I'll put that right up here in the corner for you guys. I have all my tackle right there. It's all my kokanee, my dodgers, all my crap is in there. 
I've got my bag of snacks and stuff. That usually just sits in the back. And then my backpack here has got my camera gear, my phone, everything else that I need right here. If you guys notice, I have that tripod sitting up. And since I have my camera on that in the boat, you know, I don't want that camera falling off because I love my camera. So I took one of my cam straps that I used to hold my boat on top of my car on the, the way here. I just put one of those guys around the battery because the battery is super heavy. And now this tripod, it's really not, really not going anywhere. So I just put my camera on top of that. And that's what I use to turn on to when I show you guys like really, you know, up close shots of some of the good fish of my day. That's pretty much the setup. If you guys have any more questions about it, just leave a comment below. I pretty much get back to every single comment pretty close. I'm probably 90%. If you guys want to learn more about the Pond Prowler or just be entertained, I will put two more videos right up here for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I learned a lot today. Today was definitely a big learning experience for me. I will be coming back out here to catch some more fish in the near future, as well as a ton of other reservoirs that are so close to icing off. Oh man, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun season, folks. We got a ton of good videos for you guys. The next couple months are going to be a blast. So see you guys next time on Humbug Videos.